Hello again, my Zen Tangle friends. This is part two of box floor. And uh, today I'm also going to show you how I put Henna Drum and the pattern Oara onto the one that I originally showed you. And again, this one has Lindy's Magicals paints on the background and that was a lot of fun doing that and um, I am working on another video to show how I've used the Lindy's Magicals. So I'm going to start by putting in a drum and then I'll show you how to do the OR which to me makes just a beautiful border. Okay so I'm going to use the Micron O2. I just happen to have it in um, that size. And this is a Stabilo chalk pencil in a dark blue. You do not have to have the same supplies that I do. Um, a white jelly roll, two tortillons, and the white charcoal pencil. You can do this whole thing in black ink with the graphite pencil and a tortillon for your graphite pencil. This one is done with just the graphite pencil. So it works just as well. Okay, so get these extra supplies out of the way. And the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna add an aura around this whole thing. Okay, let me zoom in just a little bit. And I've gone back to using my brown background that I used during the Inktober Tangles because it just, my tile moves easier and it helps me to stay in the right area as I'm working on these patterns for you. I am going to turn my tile as needed so that it's easier for me to get this aurid. If you're right-handed, like I said, and you keep your, what you're trying to aura to the left of your pen, it's a little bit easier to follow. I try to keep the same distance doesn't always happen and it doesn't matter. When your pattern is finished, when your tile is finished, it's going to be beautiful no matter what. I have finished some tiles and didn't really like them. And if you'll put them aside for a couple of hours or a couple of days, for me, even I have put them aside for a couple of weeks and come back to them. And it's like, hmm, did I do that? <laughs> and just believe in yourself, believe in what you're doing, and you'll do well. Okay, so now I'm just going to put like the crescent moon. This is the bottom of Henna Drum. I'm going to fill that in and put an aura and another aura. And then for henna drum, I always start in the middle. You can make your petals however you want. This is my favorite way to do it. I've done it so many times like this that. Like I said, you end up with muscle memory. And for an old person like me, I need memory. So this helps me out a lot. Okay, and then I'm going to just flick my pen a few times in here to give this a little bit more texture. And then I'm going to move on and do it in each one of these. You know what? I missed the aura there. 
Okay, hide it now. Okay, no problem. And two little petals. And I'm not doing these very big, and it's just an easy little wiggle across the top of each of these petals and then add my little lines i can add <clears throat> excuse me henna drum on almost any pattern and just totally love it This is November 1st. Can't believe it's already November. And we just had daylight savings times change. So I'm happy for that because I can start my Zentangle videos earlier in the morning in my craft room. The light is very nice in the mornings and that's my favorite time to do my recordings. So I'm happy with the daylight savings time change. I am in the Gulf Coast of Texas, halfway between Houston and Galveston. And Thank you for joining me from wherever you are in the world. I had a comment from a lady in Germany. And I'm just so thrilled with how my YouTube channel has grown because of the Inktober Tangle videos that I did. Welcome to all of you who have found me. And I hope to keep doing videos that you like. If you've read my about page, I'm a grandmother and I homeschool two granddaughters that I babysit. Uh, the oldest is seven, the youngest is almost four. And it's not the easiest job in the world, but with the pandemic, I'm happy to be able to keep them safe at home with me while my daughter works. So my videos are dependent on her schedule. I think I mentioned before that I get my paper from Dick Blick and I have shared with a couple of people uh, a wish list link that shows the paper that I buy. The gray paper and the tan paper that I use are called Stonehenge and they come in really big sheets, 22 inches by 30 inches, which becomes a challenge to cut, but uh, I get it done. And I really save a lot of money. I love Zentangle and I love their products, but like I say, I'm retired. I'm on a fixed income. 
And so it helps to save money wherever I can, especially with this Zentangle addiction. I have been addicted to it from the day that I found it. I love it. I do it every day. I could, in the few years that I've been doing it, I rarely miss a day of doing Zentangle. Okay, so hopefully I didn't get out of the video. There we go. Happy little henna drum flowers. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to do Oara. Um, it's a very simple border pattern. I'll show you kind of big first. It is an orb, and then it has an aura on each side, and then you just add another aura, another orb, another aura. Very simple. Trying to make my orbs consistent, but I rarely do. And then uh, we're going to come back and put like a little triangle down in the center of each of these. Okay, like that, like that. And I heard recently that Rick Roberts said, if you're doing an, an orb or a circle, start your circle and then just keep your eye on where you're coming back. So keep your eye on that point and you're more likely to do a consistent circle. So you keep that in mind. All right, I'm gonna go up to this corner and I'm gonna start adding my border. You might find that you do better drawing your line towards you or drawing from right to left. I have found that I do best if I keep it straight in front of me and go across left to right. Trying to keep them about the same distance all the way around. Okay, now I'm gonna come down a little bit and add my second border. Okay, so I think I'm going to start in the center and I'm going to put my first orb. And I do best just going like that. I try to be consistent, but if I'm not, it's okay. And this is where you'll come back and put your little triangles. Yeah, I definitely got too far away from that one.
But again, just enjoy what you're doing. Don't worry about making it perfect. Okay, I'm going to turn my tile and come back in this other direction. This makes a very pretty ribbon. And in the step out for this, which I do have links to the step outs for these patterns in the descriptions, um, in the step out she shows some examples of things that she has done and one thing she did was use this as a ribbon on a Christmas tree so I'm trying to come up with some ideas things to use and do for Christmas coming up and that's a really good idea Still trying to decide how I want to do the corners. So I'm going to leave those open for now. Okay, sorry about that. Sometimes I forget to turn off the alarms and reminders on my phone. Okay, that one's kind of an odd looking orb. Okay, let's go down here to this one now. Again, be happy with what you're doing, just with the fact that you're creating art. Not that you're competing with anyone, just uh, the fact that there are structured patterns to follow is my most favorite part about finding Sentangle. When I was a teenager, I remember seeing this thing called, Can You Draw This? in magazines. And I could always easily copy what someone else had drawn, but I can't sit down and like, draw a horse or draw an animal or a person it's just not easy for me to do and so it was very frustrating but when I found Zentangle and found out that I could follow those structured patterns I was just immediately hooked on it and then I started worrying about what other people were doing and how beautiful and awesome their work was. And 
then I became very intimidated by what I was looking at and thought, well, you know, I, I just don't compare to them. I'm not good enough. It's not true. Your art is yours. This is not a contest. You know, just don't worry about it. Just enjoy what you're doing. You're not being graded. You're not being judged. And the nice thing about the Facebook groups that I've joined and Instagram, there's always positive comments. Always lots of people sharing their talents. And again, I'm very happy for all of you. Grateful. I'm not a really big talkative person. <laughs> this is a pretty simple pattern, so I don't think I need to keep telling you to make a circle. Okay, I think I'm going to go in here in each one of these corners and just do an orb. Uh, this is kind of a what if, what if I do that, how's that going to look? Mm, could have been a better circle, but that's okay. Let's try that one again, see if I can get a better orb in here. And I don't have room to put that other aura, so I'm just going to go ahead and put my little triangle in there. Let's do the same thing here for my orb. Looks a little bit more like an egg, doesn't it? It's okay. And then this corner, just put my orb. This one fit well. And let's put my aura and then my little corners, triangles. Okay, so. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my blue charcoal and I'm going to go in the top of each one of these. Just add a little bit of dark. And I'm basically going to do the same thing that I did down here in that orb. Okay, I'm not worried about which direction the light's coming from. I'm going to go ahead and take this one that I have marked for blue and then just soften that. Put down a little bit. 
and I'm going to leave this white like I did here. Well, it's on a gray tile, so but I don't want to cover that. So I'm giving some dimension now to these orbs. Very simple thing to do. I do love these chalk pencils, pastels. You know, start with just a little bit. And like I said, you can do this with your graphite pencil. So if I were to do this with graphite, I would basically do the same thing. Just going to add and it kind of dark up there at the top. And now I've switched to the tortillon that I have labeled for black. And then I'm just going to go up in here and soften it and pull it down a little bit at a time. You can add a little bit down here at the bottom. Okay, so you can do the same thing with black if you have just graphite. Okay, as I keep going with this, I'm going to have to be careful where I put my hands. I've already added that blue chalk down in that one in the center. So I'm going to try to keep my hand up off of my tile as I do the rest of these. Again, you're welcome to fast forward. Do this at a faster speed if needed. I don't plan to speed up my videos because you have the option to do that if you want. That's one of the reasons that I uh, did this in two parts. Because the amount of time that it takes. Yeah, I definitely have too much of a space right there, but it's okay. Okay, again, being careful not to put my hand on that. I have seen where um, some CZTs have like a plastic, clear plastic sheet that they'll put their hand on and uh, cover the tile where needed. So that they're not rubbing that graphite or chalk. Might have to see if I can find something like that. I could even use like a plastic bag. This just helps make your orbs look round, not so flat on your tile. Turn it this way. 
Yeah, that helped. Okay. And then the last thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of blue on here. And again, if all you have is the graphite pencil or a regular pencil, use that. I love what shading does for a tile. Okay, and softly blend that. Blowing away some of that chalk that gets on your tile helps to keep it clean also. Okay, now I'm going to take my graphite pencil, graphite, my charcoal, my white charcoal. I'm going to add a little bit of highlight at the tops of these flowers. And again, this is why I love working on the gray and the tan tiles. Okay, I'm going to add just a little bit at the bottom of each of these orbs. And I said it looks much brighter in the video than it does on my tile, but it, like I said, it adds a little bit of a pop to each of your orbs. Doesn't look like that one got blended. Okay. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I have a Jelly Roll tin, just like I did yesterday. I'm going to make sure it's clean. I tend to kind of twist it like that to get any that could have been dried or caked on it. And then I'm just going to add a little dot. Highlight on each of these orbs. And again, I'm not worried about the fact that each one of these is turned a different way because with a Zentangle tile, one of the nice things about it is generally they should be non representational, which means that you can turn it and look at it from any direction and not have to worry about looking at an upside down animal or something like that, if you know what I mean. Try and keep my hands <laughs> off of the center. 
I love making the orbs pop like that. I think it kind of zoomed out, didn't it? Sorry about that. Didn't realize that. Okay. So the last thing I'm going to do, since we've got this extra space, is just to add a few little fescues to fill it in. And these can come out from any area, go in any direction. You can put little fescues anywhere to fill in space. And I'm just picking some random spots to come from. Some are short, some are long. Some can loop around more than the others and go over or behind one that you already have. Like I said, it's just an easy way to fill the space that's there. I think my pen is running out of ink. Wow, that one got kind of big, didn't it? And you could go back and make them all that same size, but I'm not worried about it. You know, I could go back and have a couple of others be big. And it looks like I meant for it to be that way. There are no mistakes in Zen Tangle. Only opportunities to learn. Okay, and you can go back when you get those little fescues done and add just a simple dot of highlight on top of them. And there are times when I put a highlight in these, but I have found that if I put that on each one of these, it ends up looking like eyes coming off of it. So I'm not gonna do that. All right, I like it. Um, add your chop. My chop, uh, I think I'm gonna have it come down from here. Here's my L, Langston, and 
So we have 2B, so I'm just going to put that. Barbara Buford Langston, BBL. All right, there you go. I enjoyed that. I hope you did too. Um, soon I'll come up with some ideas for uh, some Christmas things that you can do, some simple ideas, and I will put those up as soon as I can. All right, thank you again. I have really enjoyed this and I hope that you did too. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do and like the videos. I have just joined a thing called Kofi. Well, actually I think it's pronounced Kofi. And it is a way to help support channels. If you're interested, I have the link in my descriptions now. And it's just a very easy way for just a very small amount to uh, support my channel if you're interested. And I thank you again very much. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.